just want to start by um, clarifying that the main objective of EQC through this um, process is to provide certainty for people who have made claims and our strategy since February has really been around that. We've um, completed full, zone, full assessments on all of the red zone properties about which we have information and if there's, we, we're asking people if there's anyone in the red zone that hasn't had a full assessment from EQC please do ring our 0800 number, we want to know about them. We've um, identified about 8,700 properties in the orange zone and we've assessed all but about 700 of those so they should be completed by about middle of next week. And we've got um, 25 teams identified, or dedicated rather, to doing full assessments of land and building claims in the white zone in the hills. So we've got that in there and that will be ramping up. We continue to um, follow, to follow the prioritised inspection process that we set following the rapid assessments. So we're in the green zone doing that. So after September we did 130,000 assessments, following the February 22 event we did 180,000 rapid assessments and now we've done about 30,000 full assessments um, since, since the 22 February. Uh, in the field we've got um, a total of 220 teams, inspection teams out there, so there's the 25 I mentioned in the hills, there's 120 in the eastern area which is, includes the red, orange zone sorry, and about 75 in the north and west including Kaiapoi. Another um, priority for us is settling contents claims. We have um, received indication from about 120,000 people, um, or these still open, that, ha that have told us they do have contents damage, but of those, um, there's still 80,000 of those to actually send us their information about contents, so their contents schedule and all of the supporting documentations, and that's something as we um, ramp down the, the focus around emergency works, emergency repairs, most of those are done now, we're putting our focus onto contents. Uh, heat pumps, we've um, installed 6,300 and we've got another 1,300 on order, so, or in progress. And solid fuel burners, we've installed about 2,000 and there's about 2,000 more on order. So all up, that's um, 8,400 actually installed and another 3,400 on order. So that's sort of a quick update. Uh, I think, I think emergency repairs has been an yeah. enormous yeah. number of those done since uh, February 22nd. Yep. So we've done um, a total of about, we think about 58,000 emergency repairs. Fletchers have completed 19,000 of them and another 32,000 have been done at the owner's request that EQC's paid directly. And of those 32,000 we've got about another four, uh, or plus them we've got another four and a half thousand yet to pay. And some of those are the ones that there's been a bit of controversy around. But we're, we're um, paying people by the 20th of the month. With emergency repairs we um, are are absolutely assured that most of those contract contractors out there are dedicated, committed and completely honest. There's just a few that we need to look a bit more carefully at. We are aiming to have all contents claims settled by the end of this year and we're, we're, we're putting more resource, we have been putting more resource into that and we'll continue to increase that. It's, you know, our initial focus following February was the emergency repairs and we're moving more and more onto the contents now. Sorry. As with settling any of these claims for this event, they're quite complex because often people have more, or most people actually now have more than one claim, so we have to look at each of those claims and attribute, you know, um, the, the money to each of those claims, we have to check insurance, all of those sorts of things. So it's not as straightforward as it might have been had there been one earthquake. So At the moment we're working in, in exactly that order, um, the order that we received, the schedule and all of the information. Um, and we're also prioritising anyone who is in that vulnerable category, you know, the elderly, the sick, people with young children. If they tell us about it and they really need bits and pieces to carry on their lives and keep their families safe, then we're absolutely getting those done immediately. Um, the other point uh, was worth making is that uh, if there are people in the red zone uh, who have not made an EQC claim, uh, they need to think about doing so because their land almost definitely will have been damaged on uh, the 13th of June. So it would be useful if people were encouraged uh, to, to make that, uh, to put that claim in. A lot of people might assume that because they're being zoned, that everything's tidy. Uh, but one of the difficulties that's been faced all the way through has been the um, lack of good information coming through from uh, people when they're making claims. 
you, you imagine people are traumatised and uncertain. Uh, so um, there will be some people out there who, who would have thought, no, nope, we've been lucky, we've survived a lot, there's no damage here, nothing to look at, we're all fine, uh, who now find themselves in the red zone. They, they really should make a claim because their land is damaged at least. Uh, you know, in all of these things, you're dealing with pretty broad numbers, and uh, sometimes the broad numbers of, from, from one source don't match the broad numbers from another. So my concern is simply if there are people there who have thought through, you know, the uh, September, February events that we got away with that one, um, and now find themselves, you know, with uh, in a red zone, uh, that is because their land became more damaged on the 13th of June, but it would help us if they made a claim. The other point I'd make is that, you know, for EQC trying to sort through some of these things, um, I've seen um, uh, examples in, for privacy, we can't release these, where um, the, the example I got was a street of 75 houses, 32 of them had incorrect addresses relating to their claims. And um, that's, that's part of this, people just get, you know, they're on the phone, they're a bit upset, uh, there's probably a bit of Perhaps uh, uh, you know keying errors at the other end, but, but the keying errors would not be to that level. It's people are just uncertain about what they're saying, but it's all getting sorted out. It's um, but it does take time. Every time you come in, someone is wanting to know where their claim is, and it doesn't match an address or some other thing. It gets difficult. And sometimes people have got three different claims for the same address, and they've written or given us the address in three different formats. So you know, it's, it makes it pretty hard for us. And that's some of that work I was talking about with contents or any other claims. We have to match and associate all those claims and figure out, you know, that they they are all the same address. So. So the broad numbers are 379,000 claims from EQC, but when you split those out into land, uh, built property and contents claims it goes to 550 something thousand, close to 560,000 yep. claims. Absolutely massive. 